In today's video, I'll be talking about 10 high-speed rail corridors that I believe is needed in the US. I will first look at the travel time of existing transportation methods. Then, I will compare the travel time to cities with similar distances that already have high-speed rail connection. Finally, I will estimate the travel time if a high-speed rail were to be built between the cities. Also, to make it clear, there are many other corridors that could exist in the US, and these are just 10 of them that is the most needed in my opinion. You're welcome to discuss your ideas in the comments. Now, let's get started. The first corridor on this list is the Washington DC to New York to Boston corridor, aka the Northeast Corridor, with a distance of 226 miles from New York to DC, 231 miles from New York to Boston, and 457 miles in total from DC to Boston. Currently, the fastest train on the Northeast Corridor, the Acela, takes under 3 hours from New York to DC, under 3.5 hours from New York to Boston, and a total of 6 hours and 38 minutes from DC to Boston. Comparatively, here are the times needed to drive or fly between the three cities. I added 90 minutes to the flight time to show the time needed for TSA and traveling from downtown to the airport on both ends. The actual time needed may be different depending on the situation of that city. A similar distance with DC to New York and New York to Boston is Madrid to Venecia in Spain, a distance of around 225 miles. The time needed on a high-speed train is 1.5 hours with an average speed of 150 miles per hour. A similar distance to DC to Boston is London to Lyon on the Eurostar with 455 miles in 4 hours and 56 minutes with an average speed of 92 miles per hour. Now, let's talk about my proposal. I propose to improve the Northeast Corridor south of New York City with the fastest travel time between 2 hours and 2 hours and 30 minutes. North of New York City, I propose a new alignment with the fastest travel time of 1 hour and 30 minutes. It will take between 3 hours 30 minutes and 4 hours to travel from DC to Boston under my plan with an average speed between 150 miles per hour and 131 miles per hour. You can learn more about these two plans in these two videos, which you can check out after this one. The second one on this list is the DC to Charlotte to Atlanta corridor. Currently, it takes 8 hours to travel 328 miles from DC to Charlotte, 5 hours and 48 minutes to travel 226 miles from Charlotte to Atlanta, and 14 hours and 13 minutes to travel 542 miles from DC to Atlanta. With an average speed of 41 miles per hour, 38 miles per hour and 38 miles per hour respectively. Compared to the Amtrak train, flying and driving has a much faster travel time between these three cities. London to Paris has a slightly shorter distance than DC to Charlotte, and the trip can be made by high-speed rail in 2 hours and 15 minutes with an average speed of 135 miles per hour. Hong Kong to Changsha has a similar distance to DC to Atlanta, and can make the trip in 3.5 hours with an average speed of 150 miles per hour. I have not come up with a detailed alignment yet for the DC to Atlanta high speed rail line. But here are the estimated travel time with a high speed rail between these three cities. The third corridor I believe is needed is from Chicago to Detroit. A distance of 236 miles. A train will take 5 hours and 16 minutes with an average speed of 44 miles per hour. For driving, it will take around 4.5 hours. A flight will take around 2 hours and 15 minutes with the TSA check time and the downtown to airport travel time included. A similar distance to Chicago to Detroit is from Tokyo to Kyoto, taking 2 hours and 15 minutes by high-speed train with an average speed of 124 miles per hour. With a high-speed train with an average speed of 90 miles per hour, it will take 2.6 hours between Chicago and Detroit. With an average speed of 150 miles per hour, it will take 1.57 hours. Next on the list is Las Vegas to Denver, with a distance of 750 miles. Currently, there is no direct rail service between these two cities. Driving will take around 10 hours. A flight will take around 3 hours and 30 minutes, including the TSA and airport to downtown travel time. With a 90 miles per hour average speed, 
it will take around 8.3 hours between Las Vegas and Denver. With a 150 miles per hour average speed, it will take around 5 hours. Number 5 on this list will be Las Vegas to Salt Lake City, with a distance of 420 miles. Similar to Las Vegas to Denver, it also does not have direct rail service. Driving will take around 6 hours, while flying will take around 3 hours including the TSA and airport to downtown travel time. If a high-speed rail was to be built between Las Vegas and Salt Lake City, it will take around 4.6 hours with an average speed of 90 miles per hour, or 2.8 hours with an average speed of 150 miles per hour. Next we have on this list is a Miami to Orlando to Jacksonville to Charlotte high-speed rail line. Currently, there is the Brightline service between Miami and Orlando with a travel time of 3 hours. Even the fastest Amtrak service will take 70 hours and 45 minutes from Orlando to Charlotte, and it will require a transfer in between. I will put a travel time for the other modes and a similar distance comparison on the screen. If a high-speed rail was built between Miami and Charlotte, it will take 7.22 hours with an average speed of 90 miles per hour and 4.33 hours with an average speed of 150 miles per hour. Number 7 on my list is a San Antonio, Houston, New Orleans, Atlanta high-speed rail corridor. To save time, the information will be put on the screen. The travel time of the entire line between San Antonio and Atlanta will be quite long even with the 150 mph average speed. I still believe the corridor is needed since it will also attract passengers traveling between cities in the middle. The next on my list is the Vancouver, Seattle, San Francisco, LA, San Diego high-speed rail corridor. I know I've said on my title that this is 10 high-speed rail corridors for the US, but this will be the only exception with slightly crossing the border to Canada. Currently, there is no direct rail service between Vancouver and San Diego, but it is possible to travel between these two cities by rail by transferring multiple times. Like the San Antonio to Atlanta high-speed rail corridor we mentioned earlier, it will take a long time to travel by high-speed train from Vancouver to San Diego. But for someone who is traveling between cities in the middle, it could have a pretty competitive travel time compared to flying and driving. Number 9 we have on this list is San Diego to Phoenix high-speed rail corridor. There is currently no direct rail service. Driving will take around 5 hours, and flying will take around 3 hours, including the TSA and downtown to airport travel time. With a distance of 355 miles, it will take 3.94 hours with an average speed of 90 miles per hour, and 2.36 hours with an average speed of 150 miles per hour by high-speed rail. The last corridor on this list is the Detroit-Pittsburgh. Philadelphia High-Speed Rail Corridor. Although there is rail service between these three cities, it does not have a competitive time compared to driving and flying. If a high-speed rail was built between Detroit and Philadelphia, it will take 5 hours with average speed of 90 miles per hour and 3 hours with an average speed of 150 miles per hour. And that is the 10 high-speed rail corridor that the US needs in my opinion. There are many other corridors the US could build that I won't have time to mention in this video. If you want more content about high-speed rail, you can check out this playlist where I talk about high-speed rail proposals, fleets, and systems. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in that playlist.